Okay, wait a minute. What I'm asking you? What am I asking you? I don't know. You can ask me anything like. I know. Tonight we're we're here with Jennifer and Pete Sanigan from Sanigan's Meat Locker in Kensington Market. Wonderful butcher, uh, one of our young butchers in Toronto, and he's going to be bringing. You tell me what he's bringing tonight for well, us. Well, he's bringing a selection of odd bits. I think it depends what he can get, but probably there'll be, you know, because <laughs> on the way here. Yes, yeah. get it. Um, there's probably going to be liver for sure. Yeah. There'll be um, hopefully a sheep's head that'll be cut in half, so right. we get the sheep's head and the brain, okay. tongue, tail, maybe some shank. Um, I've bought the testicles. Uh, so you're did brains to balls is yeah, how we were doing it yes yeah. and uh, he'll bring a just a selection of different ones so people can have a look at them and see what they look like physically yes and then we can and explain what questions. to do what we, what to do with them right yeah because that's Great. the thing I want people to be able to see what they look like good okay I have to hold three of your books here we're here with Jennifer McLagan who's written bones fat was the next one and most recently now we have odd bits so uh, the covers are always fantastic too I mean and this is the the best one. Remember we had this big discussion about the That's cover. Right. Would it get? And, and in the end, the US went for it and the Canadians had to be convinced. Is that That's how it right. Was? The, the Canadians were a little more dubious than the Americans and you always think it would be the other way other around. Way around. Right? But it's amazing when the Americans make a decision, they go for it. And they stick with it and they're going to, yeah. they're not going to be, they're, well, they're not going to be wrong, right? That's the thing. Well, probably that's true. The Canadians are a bit, oh, maybe it'd be right, maybe yeah. it'd be wrong. Anyway, in the end, they went with it and I'm really pleased because I like to have the same cover on the book everywhere it is. When you started with the first one with Bones, did you anticipate this being a trilogy or no, did it? I, no, I, with Bones, I thought, well, I want to write a cookbook, you know, like mm -hmm. everybody says, I want to write a cookbook. So you talk about it, you think about it. And so then when I finally, I thought I should try. Right. You might as well try. And I did it, and it was moderately successful, yeah. which gave me the means to do fat, which was the, the most difficult book to sell yes. because of the subject so, matter yeah. and because it wasn't low fat and no fat. Right. And so then after I did fat, it just seemed, you know, people said, what At you that did? point, you realized? Yeah, I just thought odd bits needed to be done. Right. People said I should do a book on skin, but, right. but it wasn't a big enough yeah. book. So. <laughs> I thought, you know, it just seems like a natural progression, like we should be eating all of the animal and really bones and fat. Right, uh, and that, the whole nose to tail yeah, was, a, exactly. was a great movement. And yeah, so that's part of the, the thing. And then this seemed to be the next step to get people from fat into liver and kidneys. Right. And, and it's interesting how people now think you, they've sort of rediscovered it, but really it's... It's really old. It, it is old. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you dis what you discovered on the way. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, I grew up eating a lot of this food. Mm -hmm. My mother cooked this food. Like for her, it's just like regular food. It's not bizarre or exotic or different. And uh, for me, it was an interesting um, voyage because my mother bless her heart she cooks quite well but she's not a brilliant cook mm -hmm. and she really turned me off a lot of odd bits especially tripe <laughs> and brain as I explain in the book because they just weren't good right and tongue which was entombed in jelly and mm. so for me it was a uh, it was me getting over some uh, prejudices that I had right. so I thought I was a perfect person to lead everybody else down that path because I think everybody has a prejudice against odd bits right. at least one they've had liver they overcooked yeah, they it's got a squishy it. texture yeah. it, it tastes yucky so you know come with me I managed to get past certain prejudices right. and then then Everybody I just explore. Yeah, everyone else can come with me too because it's really, you know, there's there's really nothing there that isn't absolutely deliciously tasty. It'll be a textural thing that might put you off yeah. and there's nothing I can do about the texture. No, that's just personal preference. Yeah, but for me that's why odd bits are so much more interesting than steak because really there's not much difference between a New York and a ribeye and a filet. It's like it's all just meat with the same texture. There's no difference in flavor. Here you've got not only different flavors but different textures. So right. it's much more exciting for a cook to play with. So in that line then, how would you recommend people look? I mean there's there's a recipe for disaster too if you go to a butcher who doesn't know what they're doing. Um, yeah, I think with this you really need to have a relationship with a butcher. Yeah. So you can find these cuts, make sure where they're coming from and make sure they're really, really fresh. Yeah. And this book is called Odd Bits. It's not the awful, awful cookbook. No. Which, yeah. Yeah, which, which yeah, I, I wanted to avoid. But it's, it's, and it's not the Balls and Brains book either. No, but it's, that would be a good title too. Um, <laughs> You know, there's lamb shanks in there. Yeah. There's like some regular stuff in there. Lamb neck, which isn't such a stretch. So you right. can come into these odd bits that way, and then you can try the more exotic odd bits as well. 
exotic. Now you're Australian background. Is there anything Australian in here that you would you would have? Uh, I don't think there's anything that's specifically Australian. Australian. We ate a lot of what we call lamb's fry that some mm -hmm. people think of as testicles, but for us that was liver. Okay. So I've got lamb's liver in there that some people tend to overlook, but I've given it Indian spicing. Right. You know what I find really interesting? I would say you know if you went through the shelves of all yeah. all the books you've got on the shelves here, all the ethnic cookbooks. There is hardly any odd bits recipes in them. Why is that? Do you I know? think some kind of editor said, "Oh, no one will want to cook right. them. They've taken them out, and that's a shame because every culture has, has a huge yeah. repertoire. No of matter what, yeah, yeah, Indian, you know, yeah. Chinese, Spanish, yeah. uh, Central European, all through Europe. I grew so, up on haggis, although that's quite completely different. And you but know, anyway. you know, it's not <laughs> Scottish, right? Oh no, what? Oh no, read the book, Alison. It's well, not. I didn't read the Haggis book because I thought a Haggis part because I thought I knew about no, that. Oh my goodness! I can't not. show this to my mother. <laughs> she won't reporting. believe it. She won't believe it. But exactly. it's actually an English, originally English recipe. Oh, my and father I, will then love that. I'm Scottish, so I can say that, right? Oh, okay. Um, what did you discover, though? Like, do you think there, there, this is a not a trend? Do you think this will stick now that people will I start hope, to eat this? I hope more it's not now? a trend because I kind of started. I hate trends, right? It's, mm -hmm. Oh, you're always picking trends. You know what's going to happen? I don't. I think it's just things come in in fashion, go out of fashion, right. like like clothing, right? I, I think this will come back because people are thinking about what they're reading. Yeah. They're thinking about how the animal's raised. And so if they're doing that, uh, then they'll want to eat the whole animal. That's kind of a moral right. issue there. I think it's like immoral to throw it away. And do you think butchers then, by their token then, are doing the same thing, that they're looking at using the whole beast as well? Oh, for sure, anybody who raises it. animals, for them yeah. it's much more economical if they can sell every mm -hmm. part of the animal. You know? Do you think commercially, though, I mean, we're talking about a relationship with a butcher and we're talking more smaller, independent places. Yep. What about larger stores? Do you think it's going to spill? Well, there really is no food? reason why we can't do it if we demand yeah. it. I was in the supermarket in Paris. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm always quoting Paris, but um, pig's ears, pig's tails, yeah. jezier, um, gizzards, right. liver, all there just on the supermarket yeah. shelves. In um, Finland, they have blood on the supermarket shelves frozen blood you can buy in the supermarket and you can buy a blood pancake mix. So instead of Aunt Jemima's blueberry pancakes, right. in Finland you can buy blood pancake mix. Wow. So it's just a matter of people demanding it, wanting it, and there being a market for it. Right, and being the... the so if there's a demand, it'll be there. It'll if be people there. start asking, it's like skirt steak, mm -hmm. think of something like that, which no one ever had. Now you can't get it. <laughs> yeah, ex yeah, exactly. But you know what I mean? Yeah. There's these cuts that people didn't know about, hanger steaks that become right. popular, right? They were just, you know, only the butchers were getting them. So it's just a matter of people asking and demanding, wanting them, and they can't want them if they don't have the recipes for them. So this is a place for them to start. Well, that, so what's your favorite piece of waffle? You must get asked all the time. That's really hard. It depends what kind of mood I'm in. But I think for me... Consistently, the, if you were to, you know... One of back. the biggest discoveries was heart. Oh, really? And I love recommending it to people because one, it's cheap. Yep. It's really cheap. It's so versatile. You can Who's eat heart? <laughs> beef, veal, yeah. okay. uh, lamb. Is pork. there much variation between them? Size, basically. Okay. And mm -hmm. well, the difference yep. between a pork chop and a beef chop, right. you know, like yep. the, the taste is there. Duck hearts, you can mm. just saute. Poultry hearts. But eat a beef heart or a lamb heart or a pork heart, you can braise or you can eat raw or you can cook quickly in a kebab. So, so it's very got, versatile. Yeah, you've got all that choice and plus you can buy one and experiment with it because it's not going to break the bank. Have you talked to butchers at all and have you said, I mean I know this is new, but certainly with fat and bones, there certainly was an increase. I mean then they are not trendy. I mean they have stuck too. I mean people are eating a lot more of those things that you talk about in those books. Do you think the butchers notice this? Will they say, you know, I know who's bought your book and they're asking for things. Do you Hopefully, do you hopefully. That? Yeah, I mean it would be fun. Yeah, I mean, it would be fun. I, I know a butcher outside of Ottawa and he couldn't wait because he's buying whole animals and butchering right. them and he told me he had a freezer full of heart. He didn't know what yeah. to do with. So now he's hoping oh, by, good. So for by having too. the book yeah. and showing people the recipes then maybe he'll get them to buy a heart right, right? it's a slow process but it is but I think people are interested and also if it's in the restaurants too now you know in Toronto yes. a lot of restaurants a lot of the I just young guys ears on Sunday night yeah so young you guys go. are trying this out because yeah. for them it's new they can do something that hasn't been done before they yeah. think yeah <laughs> that um, is the fun part too <laughs> and then people go eat them in the yeah. restaurant they go oh wow that's kind of cool yeah. I'd like to try that yeah. at home so it comes top-down as well and I do think the texture thing is a big part of it too yeah, I think people are are, are tr willing to try new textures uh, with their yeah, food I, in general. And they, they just need to be willing to chew. I've kind yeah. of forgotten how to chew. To chew, yes. Thank you. Wish you all the best with Thank this. You, so I don't know what you're going to do now, though. This is three. A trilogy is like. Ah. I'm doing the 101 Ways with Tofu. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Great way to end it. <laughs>